This afternoon I'm going to be speaking and presenting my research that I've done over the last few years with students in the Pinocchi Hills of Wisconsin and uh, we're going to be talking about asbestos because there is asbestos in the ironwood iron formation. Our research has been sort of evolving over the last couple of years and this summer um, Marissa Fish and I took uh, samples to the USGS Microbeam Laboratory in Denver um, and we studied our samples there. It was not a USGS study but uh, they allowed us to use the equipment and help us get good numbers and uh, we found that it is definitely asbestos. It's not just asbestos-like, it is asbestos. Um, it is amosite asbestos, naturally occurring amosite, and uh, it has all of the characteristics of the stuff that has caused a lot of disease elsewhere. What we're finding um, is that uh, scientists like Dr. Fitz, um, as well as, as um, industry scientists and um, uh, public health scientists are, are locating areas of naturally occurring asbestos, which um, is not particularly problematic if it's undisturbed, but when there are developments like the building of highways or residential areas that grow up and the soil is disturbed, mining is a perfect example, then those fibers become airborne and they can present an, an exposure to workers that are in that area um, residents that might live nearby, uh, workers often bring that material home to their, to their residents, to their, their wives and children or husbands and children, and um, uh, it, can, it can cause lung disease that uh, is very, very serious. Traditionally it was the asbestos workers and those that worked with raw asbestos that got disease. Now it's um, p carpenters and plumbers and, and even in Australia we're seeing a lot of people that are doing renovations in their own home. Those homes are made out of asbestos, asbestos cement, and these people are getting mesothelioma. So this is it from very low exposure levels, but this is a new group of people that are um, with, emerge with this old disease. So it'll be, unless we do something about it and know where it is and know how to manage it safely, this will always be a problem. A mesothelioma is a pleural cancer and both pleural, which is the lining of the lung, and peritoneal, which is the lining of the abdominal cavity. And what we know now is that the fibers do get to those cavities. They do travel to those areas. And the idea is that some kind of a stress, we call it an oxidative stress. It's sort of like a rusting process that damages the DNA and leads to these cancer formations. Why it's this unique disease, we don't know, but it's very specifically associated with asbestos. So the Minnesota Taconite Workers Health Study was released last year and it showed that there is a correlation between number of years worked in the taconite industry in Minnesota and cases of mesothelioma. So one of the things that that raises is the question about uh, recent exposures versus old exposures and you know why, <laughs> what, what is causing this. So certainly the workplace is a lot cleaner now than it was decades ago but um, you know, these, these fibers are still present in the air. Tom's talking about this site of this, this dangerous, car, dangerous carcinogen that may well be mined. Um, and so this is a great stage now to, to take a good look at this and to think about acting with a, in a precautionary way rather than just, usually we just have to solve this problem after there's a problem. But with Tom's work, the problem has been identified before there's been any work, under, any mining undertaken.